All right, so our next presentation is going to be by Finn Hafting. Uh, Finn is a recent graduate from Western Engineering, where his research focused on open source supervisory control and data acquisition, or SCADA systems. Most notably, his work, uh, his work on the modular circuit framework BREAD involved automating a chemical deconstruction reactor bioreactor and bioreactor to transform plastic weight into waste into edible proteins. All right, continuing on the uh, reuse theme. Uh, so yeah, really excited to welcome Finn to the stage. All right, hi everyone. I just wanna take a few minutes of your time to introduce my project, Bread, and how you can use it to modularize your electronics. So first, a bit about me. My name is Finn Hafting. I'm an electrical engineering graduate student at Western University, and I work out of the FAST lab, which stands for Free Appropriate Sustainability Technology. And we do a lot of open source projects at the FAST lab, um, and mainly Bread is my sort of baby with my open source project, but we do other things from plastic recycling to uh, photovoltaic racking systems as well. So first, I just want to introduce a problem that I've encountered. So a company that I'm working with to install bread um, uses this pretty archaic pH controller to control the CO2 in their seaweed growth tanks. Um, they inject carbon dioxide into the airlines to lower the pH. But there's a lot of issues with this logger that they have currently. Mainly it has no data logging and sometimes fails, with, which with no data logging, they have no idea when it failed or how they could fix it. Um, it's also difficult to repair. And because it's non-programmable, it's difficult to manage multiple controllers if you have, say, a fleet of these in a warehouse. So this problem is what's known as a supervisory control and data acquisition problem, or SCADA for short. And there are quite a few commercial alternatives that you can buy to customize a system for your process that you want to control. So there's Opto22's Groove Epic system, and then National Instruments has one called their Compact Rio system. These are all modular systems, meaning you can make whatever system you want fit to your process that you're trying to, to install. Um, but there's many issues with these. They're cripplingly expensive, and they're proprietary. So often, low resource settings will choose to go for open source projects, but that comes with, with its own caveats, which is you need programming knowledge and knowledge of electronics to integrate many of the open source hardware tools that we have available to us. And that's where Bread comes in. So Bread introduces open source SCADA to scientists and researchers without them needing to know the knowledge behind the programming and the PCB design. So a little more in depth, BREAD stands for Broadly Reconfigurable and Expandable Automation Device. And the original paper that was published about this design, we compared the individual function cards to National Instruments Compact Rio system, and we calculated up to 93% cost savings without, fun without sacrificing the functionality. Also, <laughs> thanks, all of the cases are fully 3D printed on just a standard desktop 3D printer, and all of the function cards communicate over I squared C, which is a pretty common communication interface that most open hardware has. And it's open source, which we love. So there's two main components of bread. There are the slices, which plug into the loaf. The slices, <laughs> yeah, I love the naming scheme. Uh, all of the slices act as I squared C followers, meaning they take commands in, and with custom firmware on the Arduino Nano microcontrollers that are embedded in each slice, they can take that I2C command and connect to various sensors and actuators reporting their data in real time. The loaf is what all those slices connect into, and it is responsible for transmitting power and information between all the slices. There's an optional, because all of this is I2C, you can connect an I2C controller to this interface and have your own custom firmware to tell the slices what temperature you want to set a heater at or when do you want this stirring motor to turn on, for example. And you could also get data logging from that and host a user interface if you desire. This is just 
kind of a real picture instead of a rendering. So on the left is a physical slice, kind of what the guts inside of it look like. And then on the right is me printing one of the loaf supports on my Ender 3. And now I just want to highlight three slices that I've used for multiple different systems and then go into some case studies on how we design the system for that. So all of the slices have a four letter indicator which kind of tells you their functionality. This is RLHT, which is a relay heating element controller. And on it are two relays, which can host a heater up to 250 volts AC and 10 amps. And then there are two thermocouple to digital converters for temperature sensing. So you could control two heaters with this slice. Next is DCMT. So this is the brushed DC motor controller. On it are two H bridges, so you could host a DC motor up to three amps and up to 55 volts. Or you could, and you can choose to use either a custom voltage up to that 55 volts or use the nominal 12 volts that all the slices get from the loaf to control your motors. And there are also two optional incremental encoder inputs. So you can, if you want precise position control, you would plug in an encoder to these and that would be the functionality you would get. And this is a bit of a special slice. So PHDO is a pH and dissolved oxygen sensor slice. And you'll notice there's no Arduino on this slice because we're using proprietary O2 and pH sensors from Atlas Scientific. They do their job really well and are quite expensive, but researchers might want to use them anyway. So BREAD is a great framework for integrating also I2C enabled proprietary technology with an open source system. On all the slices are labeled the inputs and outputs. And rather than using screw terminals, I went with kind of a press fit design and all you do is plug in a solid core wire, and then if you want to unplug it, you just put a little screwdriver in the notch at the bottom and you can pull the wire out. So on our open science framework repository, we have 16 unique slices to perform various functions. And setting up a new system, if you want to build a bread system for your process, is as simple as picking your control points, going to this repository, picking the slices that would meet those control parameters, and then configuring your controller. So do you want to use a Raspberry Pi, a BeagleBone, or an ESP32? Really anything that's I2C enabled could be used to control these slices. So I just want to go into some case studies where I made a bread system specific for an application. So the pyrolysis reactor, we wanted to have six heating controllers and six temperature, sensing, uh, temperature sensors, and then a stirring motor for our dissolution tank. And this was to turn plastic waste into gas, oil, and lubricant. So the bread configuration for this looked like three relay heater slices and one DC motor slice. And we learned a valuable lesson from this exercise, which was modularity is very important in research. After we built this system, the chemist that designed the pyrolysis reactor said, we actually want eight heaters and eight thermocouples, and all we had to do was just add another relay heater slice as opposed to designing a whole new system, which was very convenient. Next is our open source bioreactor. So on this, this was a great kind of way of stretching bread's legs and testing the limitations. So we wanted a heating controller, temperature sensors, stirring, and then also we added pH control through two peristaltic pumps to input a liquid, acid, a liquid acid or a liquid base. And then also we wanted to monitor dissolved oxygen. And this configuration was just one relay heater slice, two DC motor slices, and then the proprietary pH dissolved oxygen slice that I mentioned earlier. But we didn't get here overnight, and it took many iterations to get to where bread is today. This was iteration one. It's very flimsy, and this is where I learned headers can't support an entire PCB. <laughs> so next, I designed some 3D printed cases to better hold the slices, but it was difficult to connect multiple loaves together if you wanted more than eight slices in your system. So next, I decided to mount everything to a standard aluminum 2020 extrusion. So you could make a bread loaf as long as you wanted with as many slices as you wanted. Um, and this had some issues with it as well, which was we were using screw terminals, which meant whenever you unplugged, a, you had to unplug a slice if you wanted to plug in your actuator or sensor, which was quite inconvenient. And this leads us to our, the current design of bread. So as I mentioned earlier, it has press fit connections, which are very convenient, and everything's mounted to a standard DIN rail. So installing this in a standard electrical box that you would see in a process uh, can be easily done because this just mounts to a standard DIN rail. 
So now I just want to tell you what's in the oven, what the future of bread looks like. <laughs> so first off, I want to make a pH controller slice that would uh, tackle the problem I presented earlier, that would take in pH and then control a solenoid valve to inject CO2 into the airline. I also want to streamline the setup process. Currently, all the I2C addresses are assigned manually in code. But if we could implement auto I2C addressing, the user could just plug the slice in, and all the firmware for the Arduino Nanos on the slice would be the same. And lastly, a modular UI. So through something like ThingsBoard or Node-RED, open source projects that already exist that do graphical user interfaces way better than I could, um, implementing that with the controller uh, is kind of the next steps. So thank you for listening. I put up the bread GitHub. I have the three slices that I mentioned on there. Um, and then there's also the loaf and an ESP32 controller on there as well. And if you have any questions, you can email me. My email's up there as well. And I'll be outside answering questions as well. I also brought the bioreactor controller uh, from my lab. So if you want to feel what a slice and the size of it is in real life, I'll be out there as well. Thank you.